<clears throat> Do you guys want to know what he's playing with? <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Um, my name is Elias, and in today's video, we're going to be reviewing every single book I read in 2023. Just to preface though, this is probably my worst reading year um, ever. I've read the lowest amount of books, the quality of books, and just book releases this year, which is not it for me. It's gone downhill, which brings me to the new year to that extent. I'm really hoping, really, really hoping that the quality of books, my most anticipated reads of 2024, albeit not very many, will be substantially better. I feel like a lot of the books I will be reading in 2024 will be a lot of backlisted books, books that I own. Just like one of my main goals for the new year. Anyways, so before we get started, I would like to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Anna Luisa. So Anna Luisa have been friends of this channel for quite some time now. I absolutely love them, love what they stand for and all of their jewelry pieces. This holiday season, if you're looking to find the perfect gift for a family friend, a loved one, or even yourself, Anna Luisa has got you covered in that department. If you didn't know who they are, they're essentially a sustainable jewelry company. They're also carbon neutral, which is fantastic. All of their jewelry essentially is sustainable from their packaging to their products. They also craft high quality, timeless pieces to bring some of that elegance and classic look to your everyday lifestyle. This time around, I chose three pieces, three of which I'm wearing right now in this video. The first one up is a necklace called the Finley. It's pretty simple and dainty, but perfect if you want to layer it with another necklace. The next piece that I chose is the Elijah regular this is a bracelet, also in gold as well. Wanted to switch over to just some gold stable pieces for the holiday season, and I really like this one because there's a whole ton of wiggle room to it as well. Last but not least, I'm wearing the Evan Ring. It has this really cool unfinished design look to it, and I also got it in the biggest size, in size 9, and it pretty much fits through my fingers perfectly. So again, if you're looking for elegant, high-quality jewelry pieces for a family, friend, a loved one, or yourself, check the link below because they're having a huge sale right now on their website, which you should take advantage of. Once again, everything is linked, and thank you to Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. All right, and with that being said, let's get straight into the books. So this year, I am sad to say, I read less than 50 books. I think I came to 43 books total this year, and we're pretty much through the halfway point of December, but I gotta say, I truly don't think I will be able to finish any book, maybe in between this time in January. Maybe I'll give myself one book to finish. Um, I just have not been feeling the mood to read lately for any reason, even on audiobook, even on my Kindle, physically. I just, I don't know, the fire within me to wanting to read certain books is just not there. And so I feel like maybe I should take a break, you know, instead of trying to force myself to hit a certain goal, like, I don't know, say 50 books. I know, I know that I could easily hit 50 books easily. Like if I started right now, I mean, there are like 10 manga books on my shelf waiting to be read easily. I could do that in a day, knock it out. But I don't know, I don't want to force myself. I don't think it's part of being a mood reader that I am where I am right now. I think it's just being a little burnt out in general with just reading, right? Um, I haven't been into books lately as much as I have been in the past few months, maybe a year. And that's something I want to reevaluate going into 2024. Um, read more for myself, just reading more in general and reading books that I enjoy and books that I want to read. So yeah, not to get, you know, sentiments or anything, but we're just going to go ahead and get started because I can't wait for this year to be over in terms of just terms of like books and reading in general. 2023 was a good year, I think, in terms of like outside of reading <laughs> in general. Um, a lot of new things happened. I got to travel a lot as well, but reading wise... I don't know, maybe that had to take a plunge um, to alleviate certain, I don't know, things in my life. Not to say though that there aren't a lot of books I enjoy this year. There are some new favorites that I found as well, which, you know, thank God. Um, 43 books, and I will also be doing like a stats video um, sometime later, I think in the new year, once I have officially ended uh, 2023. All right, are we ready? The first book I read in 2023 was The Stolen Air by Holly Black. This one I really enjoyed. I really liked getting back into the world again. It was nostalgic and I can't wait for what the second book in, I want to say a duology, but yeah, really enjoyed it. Four out of five. The next book is A Certain Hunger. This one, I gotta say was pretty underwhelming. I honestly don't even remember a lot of what happens in this book. I just remember feeling disappointed and I thought it was a pretty lame, like cannibalistic book. Two out of five. This one is a manga, but this is volume 10 in the Ancient Mages Bride series. I do remember enjoying it for what it was. I also read volume 11 of the Ancient Mages Bride. 
enjoyed it as well. Reading manga, rating manga in general, is just hard to rate like per volume, right? It's just an ongoing part of a larger story. And it's, it's a little weird just rating individual like volumes where they're all containing like one big story arc. But the animation, the anime, chef's kiss i fucking love next is silver in the wood and this is a novella and while i did enjoy it i thought the pacing was a little off and it just didn't fully reach its potential for me 3.5 out of 5. this next one is the strange library and pretty much my first murakami book i've ever read and also a novella of sorts as well it's a short story and while there are some hidden themes and messages scattered throughout the book i feel like it was a really weird and strange book that failed to deliver or just maybe i didn't get the messages but i thought it was really lame for a short book it was rather forgettable two out of five the next book i read is daisy jones and the six and boy oh boy read this on audiobook and it was a fucking game changer and i understand the hype i was really hesitant about the hype going to this book but you know what it's fucking warranted. I fucking loved it. Listen to this book, an audiobook. This is one of those books where the audiobook just really elevates the story experience for you. And I really, really like this one. Four out of five. The next book I read is a sequel, and this was a YA slasher, Clown in the Cornfield 2, Friendo Lives. And I did enjoy it, but for a sequel, again, it could not avoid the sequel horror curse, where usually the second movie or book in a horror franchise is pretty much the worst one. The only franchise that I could think of that doesn't fall into this curse is the Scream series, Scream 2, which is honestly on par almost as the first movie, but can't say the same for the second book. Um, there were some certain plot elements that just, I mean, it was ridiculous to an extent, but the sequel does take the cake for this one in the most ridiculous um, department. So three out of five, ridiculous, but fun. The next one is also a manga, Deco Boko Sugar Days. And this one was just so lighthearted, so cute. It's regarding this romance between these two childhood friends. One of them is like a pessimistic, grumpy, you know, you, have, you know that trope, the sunshine trope and the grumpy trope. And in this case, there's also a huge height difference. The grumpy is like a short king and the taller one is tall, tall, 6'5", super sunshine. So it was really cute, volume one in, I believe, two volumes. So five out of five, really enjoyed this one. Next was my first, I wanna say thriller of the year. And this was These Silent Woods. And I gotta say, it honestly made me feel things. It was very slow and very subtle. I would honestly not even market it as thriller. It was more like a father-daughter, slow burn mystery, family drama. And while I did enjoy it, I thought it was all right, three out of five. The next one, Prince of Thorns, my first high fantasy book of 2023. I remember picking this one up on a whim at an airport um, before going to Vietnam. And I, I enjoyed it to an extent because there were some really interesting aspects in this book that I did not enjoy. Um, just mainly the fat shaming and all the female characters. I think I remember describing this fantasy series as a straight alpha male's fantasy fantasy. Three out of five. I also read the next two books in the trilogy, King of Thorns, and I gave this one four out of five. I actually really enjoyed it and just how and the way the story progressed forward was really interesting to me. I don't know what that says about me considering what I said about the first book, but there it is. The last and the third book in that trilogy, Emperor of Thorns, also four out of five. Also by that exact same author, The Book That Wouldn't Burn. I actually really, really like this one. This one was his most recent book that he published in 2023, while the original trilogy was, I think, one of his first books that he wrote and released. The difference between the two in terms of like plot, story, structure, characters, and writing, astronomical. Loved it. But books about books. And also, you can't tell me otherwise that this book is a love letter to furries everywhere. There you go, four out of five. The next book, my first dark fantasy romance book of the year, The Fox Glove King, and it is one of the worst books that I read this year, one out of five. Another romance fantasy book, but this one I absolutely fucking love, The Divine Rivals, five out of five. I mean, that particular month, we were rolling in romance fantasy because I also read The Serpent and the Wings of Knights, and while I did have a semblance of a good time, it was still pretty fucking bad, 2.5 out of five. Next, I reread one of my all-time favorite trilogies, and this is The Foxhole Courts. The Foxhole Court, The Raven King, and The King's Men. All five out of fucking five. Fucking love it. It's super toxic and problematic as hell, but the story, the characters, Andrew and Neil have my heart forever. Five out of five. This was the time of the year where I did the reading short books challenge for 24 hours, Night Sky with Exit Wounds, and Time is a Mother, both poetry collections by Ocean Vuong, five out of fucking five. Beautiful, poetic, and it was just eye-opening. Loved it. Next is Lie With Me, and this is a book that was translated from French 
by the Molly Ringwald. So bizarre and so random, but I absolutely adore this book, 4 out of 5. Next is one of my first Japanese translated books that I read in 2023, and this is Kitchen, 4 out of 5. Convenience Store Woman is next, and while I did enjoy this, this one was a little weird, a little mundane, a little underwhelming, but I still enjoyed it, 3 out of 5. I read Heaven, and this was a heartbreaking story about bullies and bullying and just the people that you surround yourself with in this certain environment and how that said trauma bonds and brings you guys together. Really interesting. 3 out of 5. The Vegetarian. This one was very, very weird. Not at all what I expected. 3 out of 5. This is how you lose the time war. To this day, I can't even explain it. I just know that it's a sapphic sci-fi romance fantasy between these two agents on the opposite ends of this polarizing war in the distant dystopian future. And it was so fucking weird. I really, really liked it because uh, four out of five. The Cat Who Saved Books. That's all I'm going to say. Five out of five. Tender is the fucking flesh because that fucking ending. Four out of five. Human X. This one was such a huge contrast to The Vegetarian, but this one was also based on a real tragedy as well, and it was just so fucking heartbreaking. Four out of five. Swimming in the fucking dark. Oh my god. I fucking love that book so fucking much. Five out of five. The Only One Left by Riley Sager, and apparently this is not his last book before he goes on a hiatus because... Apparently he has a new book coming out in 2024, this time from a POV of a male character because all of his other books have perspectives from female characters. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, for this one, meh, two out of five. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Oh my God. Still stuck with me? Still remember it? It's fresh? I fucking sobbed. I don't think I've ever cried or sobbed this hard or this much for any other book, even more than A Little Life. Five out of fucking five. If you know, you know. Fourth Wing. Surprisingly, I really enjoy this one. Um, four to five. That's all I'm going to say. A Tale of Golden Iron. Ugh, unfortunately, I didn't really like this one. I thought it fell off. It was just, the spark wasn't there. It sort of flatlined and the characters and the story, the premise had so much potential to be something so great, but ultimately just fell flat for me, sadly. But I do got to say the romance between the bodyguard and the prince it was still pretty stinking cute. So solely on that, three out of five. The Will of the Many. The beginning and the premise was so interesting. And the middle and the ending was where it sort of lost me, especially the ending. I literally had to go on Reddit forums to find out what happened at the end. And while I am intrigued, I don't think I will be reading or picking up the second book. 3.5 out of 5. What Moves the Dead. This one was basically a straight up rehash retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher. Like if you know that story, like every page is pretty similar, pretty much like on par with this book. Three to five. Iron Flame. This book was so fu- Stupid! Oh my god. Sorry. That was pretty aggressive. You'll hear me talking about this stupid book later. You know what? I'm not gonna even rate it. There you go. Starling House. Ultimately, very surprising. Fucking loved it. The reading experience for this one pretty much unlike anything I've ever read because illustrations and footnotes and just a very heavy atmospheric book akin to reading like a very dark fairy tale, but adults fucking loved it. 4.5 out of 5. Midnight is the darkest hour. All the twilight references and the fucking ending. From In My Dreams I Hold a Knife to this one. And while I do admire the range, you know, from both books, this one was uh, pretty disappointing, a letdown. 2.5 out of 5. Finally, last and not least, Piranesi. This is a reread that I did with my patrons and... Tear, tear. <sighs> the house, immeasurable. You will always have my heart. Piranesi, I fucking love you to your core. Yes, I named my cat after this book. 5,000 stars, all of the above. And there you go. This was honestly pretty fun to do considering, you know, the amount of books that I read and just remembering the reading journey, the experiences, the feelings, and the thoughts that I had with each book. I gotta say, reflecting on this, 2023 was not necessarily a bad year. I mean, a lot of them were like average, mid, three-star range books. Surprisingly, there were only, what, a handful, like maybe one to two or three one-star reads? I mean, hey, I gotta say, that is an improvement from the other years where I have read and rated one-star books, you know? So, a win-win. Please let me know down below how many books you guys have read in 2023, I would love to know. I will also leave a link to my Patreon down below if you guys are looking for extra content, monthly movie nights, and monthly book club, and just more content for me in general. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and I will see you all soon with a new video.